what's up welcome back to my channel in this video we are going to be resetting for 2024 i'm going to be taking you through my entire planning for 2024 and we're also going to be working on my first mobile app that I've been telling you guys all about throughout the year. So I'm really excited to start this video. If you haven't seen my last video, I talked a little bit about how to actually plan for the new year. One of the first things to do when planning for the new year is definitely reflecting. And like when I tell you last year was definitely one of the hardest years of my life. I don't really talk a lot about it. Maybe the second hardest year of my life. And it was not an easy year. I'm just excited for a new year and a new opportunity to really work towards my goals. I just feel like this is going to be such a good year. I, I usually, like I always feel like it's going to be a good year. <laughs> but this year, I feel like it's going to be a good year. And we're going to make our goals happen this year. I'm focused on just a few goals that I really want to achieve for this year. I just feel like setting goals for yourself and setting intentions is so critical to just living the life that you want to live and just setting a direction for yourself i do believe that you can reach your goals without doing intense planning but for me i need it i can't put in the work if i don't even know what i'm working towards it's so much easier to get stuff done when i know why i'm doing it i do want to say though like things might not work out perfectly exactly as you plan by setting goals creating a plan you'll get somewhat close to reaching those goals it might not happen this year but it might happen a few years out so yeah i'm really excited for this year i really truly in my heart i believe it's going to be a great year for all of us so let's start planning for the year So one of my goals is to launch my app this year, which I'm really excited about. So for planning for the app, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm using a strategy from the 12 week year. So I'm breaking down my yearly goals into goals that I can accomplish in 12 weeks. I have the master goal, which is I want to launch my app. Every single week, I have a goal about what I want to get done that week. What I learned last year, this is an important lesson last year, is to give myself a lot more time. So for every single goal that I think I can do in one week, I'm giving myself two to three weeks to get that goal done. So I have something I'm trying to accomplish every single week. And on top of that too, I have on my calendar a time block that reflects when I'm supposed to work on that specific goal. So for example, like to launch the app, I'm going to need to give myself a few hours every single day to code, which is what I have on my calendar. And finally, the last step of my planning process is I add it to my habit tracker. On my habit tracker, I have a habit that's like, did you do deep work for three hours today? So this way I'm keeping myself accountable week by week. And I'm also keeping myself accountable day by day. Some people are going to think that this is like so extra, like, do you have to do all this? No, I don't have to do all this, but I do it because it really keeps me together. Okay guys, so I'm done with my planning for at least the next 12 weeks. I'm really excited to just focus on executing my goals these next five weeks. I also did some financial planning. Financial planning now is a lot different from what it was like when I was working a stable nine to five job. With content creation, your income fluctuates drastically. I still did some planning for my finances, looked at my bank statement, his bank statements, our joint account bank statements, just to get a sense of our finances. Because we already track meticulously, we track our balances throughout the year it wasn't that difficult to get a sense of where you are what you're spending on after that i sat down was able to create budget of our general expenses of course i found some things that we were paying for that i was kind of like why are we paying for this again so i took the time to cancel some subscriptions and also we always prioritize our savings and investing first so i made sure to turn on some automations for investing for this year i'm gonna link the video of how i do my financial planning i don't want to get too much into it but i'll link it up above and if it's helpful for you let me know down below but i'm gonna keep coding and keep working on my app okay everyone so we are off to the whitney my friend invited me to this members only event so let's go to the museum i actually have not been to the whitney in a very long long time. It's a modern art museum in New York City and I'm excited to go back. I got the designs back from the designer. Like she 
killed it y'all i usually never get excited over things but as you can tell like this is something i'm so excited about not only did she help me improve all the different pages of the app she also helped me with the branding of the app she created a name she created like the colors that are gonna go with the app the fonts she also helped me with the ux of the app too like how the different pages flow this is a huge step for the app which means that this week we're going to implement all the different pages for the app. Unfortunately, of course, I don't have that much experience in iOS development, so we're going to learn as we go. But I'm so excited that we have the designs for the app. I feel like the app was here, but she took it to another level. Like, I'm seriously so impressed by what she was able to do. I got this question and I've responded to it on YouTube, but I felt like it was something that was worth including in the vlog. So people are asking like, how were you able to work with the designer? This is my first time working with a designer. If you remember when I was a software engineer over like three years ago, I was a software engineer working with backend tools. So I was building backend tools to help developer productivity. So I never worked with the designer. So this is kind of a new experience for me too, but this is how we did it as me, the noob and she, someone who has worked with engineers before. So the first thing we did is we had a call where I walked her through the wireframes that I created on Canva and I also created via paper. And I also did a screen recording because if you saw my last vlog, I kind of walked her through what the flows would look like and how to actually use the app. So by the time she got the app, it was basically kind of done. You guys saw it last video. So I gave her the, the video of the flows, the initial wireframes. I also sent her the Pinterest board of what I wanted the general design and vibe of the app to be. With those assets, a week later, she sent me like a video prototype that she had created on Figma, like the different transitions and animations in the app and how the flow would be. She also improved on the things that were on the app. Then after she sent me that prototype, I gave her more feedback. And then a few days later, she gave me the final Figma file with like all the engineering specs. So in the Figma file, she gave me the colors, the text style, the iOS components, like the different buttons, the tabs. She also had like all the different flows and how to improve how the app flowed. So I hope that gives you enough information of just like the step-by-step -step process for me working with the designer. And now it's my turn to just implement the designs she's given me. So that's what I'm going to be doing this week. So yeah, there's a lot of work to do and I'm really excited, but I hope you guys join me on this journey. And none of the videos in this whole building this iOS app are going to be sponsored. The sponsor is going to be the app itself. So I'm going to just say that if you're interested in using the app or you're interested in just learning more about the app, just leave your email down below. There's going to be a link in the description box and there's also going to be a link at the top comments. This app is going to be a freemium app, so there will be free components of the app so everyone can use it. Almost everyone can use it just as long as you have an iOS app. And then if you want the more advanced features of the app, then they're going to be behind a paywall. So that kind of gives you a general sense of the plan for the app, but we still have a lot to do. That's why this entire week is going to be dedicated to implementing the designs that the designer gave me. So let's get started. Hey guys, so we've made so much progress on the app. It's not perfect, but the progress is there. Let me give you guys a quick little update. We have so many screens done. Like the first screen is done. It just needs to be stylized because I'm not really sure how the width of the frames work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go look at a YouTube video to learn more about that. But just with my beginner knowledge, look at how much we've been able to do. We have the profile page done. So users can look at their time budget. They can look at their plan. They can look at their account information. So much progress made, but it's been a grind. I'm giving myself two weeks to implement all of the design. And then the next few weeks will be more about debugging, testing, getting beta users, getting people to try out the app and seeing how they like it. But yeah, a lot of progress so far. square i'm not staying at home today i feel like in the winter it's so tempting to just spend your entire day at home but i feel more productive sometimes when i work outside so today we're gonna go to a few cafes around union square in downtown manhattan and also code and do more planning for the new year new york in the winter is actually really nice there are less tourists less people outside which makes it more fun you know to just walk around and it's a little bit more peaceful and less chaotic also a holiday weekend right now too so that's another reason why not that many people are in the city right Right now but I hope this also means that the cafe is fairly empty I don't know if that's what it's gonna mean but we'll go and see <laughs> 
It's also a flower shop, y'all. So I think it's like a cool mixture of flower shop and cafe. We're finally here. It is kind of packed. That's the problem with anywhere you find online, like always packed, but we're gonna work here for a little bit and get some coffee. an orange cookie and a drip coffee. This place is very, very packed. Almost every seat is taken. If you're looking for like a quiet study spot, this is not the study spot for you, but I'm still gonna get some work done here. There are a couple things I wanna do with implementing the design for the app. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be working on the sessions page and just improving the design of the sessions page. And then after that, improving the design of the profile page. Let's go to the next cafe. We're taking the Uber. I'm not taking the train. So now we're off to our next spot, which is Public Hotel. They actually have a little like working space that's totally free for anyone to use on the second floor. So that's where we're gonna go right now. Tell me why it's totally packed. It's a public holiday and it's 2 p.m. You would think that no one would be here, but we got the last table. Everyone knows this is a good study spot. Fortunately, they don't have Wi-Fi. This is a pro and a con. If you're someone who doesn't need Wi-Fi to get your job done, this is a great place to focus. For me though, I do need Wi-Fi. I'm hotspotting for my phone, which is helpful. But why did no one tell me how fun iOS development is? Like I'm having so much fun building this app. It's crazy. This has been the most rewarding project for me because it solves a problem that I have and is also going to help people who have problems managing their screen time. So I'm so excited to launch this app as soon as possible. But even though it's been really rewarding and fun, like literally fun, I wake up every day happy to work on this project. It has been difficult and complicated. I have a newfound appreciation for people who build apps professionally because when I tell you even the smallest implementation takes several lines of code, like is not so easy to implement. A tip that's really been helping me a lot is that Figma actually has AI generated code. So the different parts of pages that I want to implement, Figma actually gives you like really good starter code. The code isn't completely accurate, but it's a really good first start for someone who doesn't really know a ton about iOS. So yeah, 